In our last instructional lesson, we practiced adding a video and image clips from our browser window to the timeline, and then we actually added these 25 clips here in a specific order from the Disasterville movie. We're going to use these clips to learn about editing. So in your timeline at this point, you should see 25 clips. Oop, I see 24. Better add this one. So let's get started. The first thing I'd like you to do is to find the 10th clip in your timeline called UAV camera, and it's right here. Click on it to activate it, and it'll show up in your viewer. Then go up to the timeline setting bar and extend the slider all the way to the right to enlarge the view of your timeline like so. All right, we just want to see it close up. In fact, most of your timeline won't be visible now at all. What I'd like you to do now is notice that if you put your cursor on this line on that clip, it will turn into two arrows above and below the line. And if you click down and press and drag, that sound line, which is what it is, it records the audio level, you can actually move that to zero. And that's what I'd like you to do now. If you don't see this blue area at all, you can make it appear by clicking on settings and then making sure this box is checked. If it's not checked, the blue waveform boxes disappear. When you're done reducing the sound of this clip, Drag your settings bar all the way to the left to reduce the size of your timeline and see many more of your clips. Now do the same value reduction method to any clip in your timeline with audio. I think there are 10 clips with audio out of the 25 that we have. And you can use the shortcut Shift Command M to lower the volume of any clip that's clicked on and activated in your timeline also. How did I get to know that shortcut? Well, I went up to Help, Keyboard Shortcuts, and actually a dialog box opened. You can see here with all the keyboard shortcuts. So you ha also have this in your logbooks, but note that you can also get it on your screen as well. Note that there are many clips like this one where there's actually blue, but I don't necessarily need to pull the line to zero because if I play that clip, there's no sound. And I can know that because I don't see these waveforms in those boxes. So it won't hurt if you do pull it to zero, but know that you don't have to. Okay, so let's get back to editing our Disasterville movie. Go ahead and play approximately 30 seconds of your movie up through the tornadoes uh, clip. You can place your cursor at the start by just dragging it there and then pressing your space bar, or there is a shortcut, and that is your backward slash key. So go ahead and try that. See what you think of your movie so far. So it's awfully quiet, right? Well, let's start by bringing in the Disasterville Music soundtrack in iTunes. And to do this, go up, hmm, there's my media, go up to audio right above your browser. And this once again is called the content library. Click on audio and then over on the side in the library, click on iTunes. And odds are you have some music files in there. That just means that these were imported to iTunes. You can have lots of music in iTunes and it's a good place to store your music to be consistent. Well, the soundtrack that we want is called Disaster W Music. And all you have to do is press E or click and drag it. So there we go. So go ahead and lower the volume a little bit just so that we don't interfere too much with each other. 
and just listen to how things are going up through the tornado clip. Welcome back. So what do you think? It is a lot better with music, but it's still nowhere near as good as we can make it. So let's get to work and make it better. First of all, I want you to notice that on your very first clip, there's a little turtle. And all that means is that that clip is actually going slower. That's the clip that early on we added the freeze frame to, to elongate it. So it plays longer, so we've slowed it down. And you can see that by comparing the clip in the browser, right here, which is 4 seconds, to it in your timeline, which is 6.5 seconds. Second, I want you to notice that the second clip, let's see what it's called. If I click on it, it's called Transportation Help that seems out of place because this tornado hasn't even happened yet. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add another clip called um, Gazebo 2. And it's a bunch of people right here standing around talking in the... Whoops! Wrong shortcut. And what I want to press, anyone remember? I want to press W. There we go. All right, so now things look pretty good. Another thing that you may notice is that each clip cuts abruptly to the next. And that that's represented by these empty spaces in between um, each clip. We can make this area or the, the space between clips that transition much smoother. And iMovie actually makes it pretty easy to do. In the content library above the browser, right here, click on the word transitions, and you'll see about, oh, I think 24 or so transitions. And if you put your cursor over the transition, you'll see what it does to soften that hard cut between clips. And if you find you want to try one out, just click on the clip and double click on the transition and it will appear both before and after the clip. You also can just pull it to the timeline. When you're first introduced to transitions, they can be a lot of fun, but it doesn't take long to find out that they can easily distract from a movie. And they can be pretty busy, so I'll add this this one. Let's see what it looks like. It's lots of fun, but it's a little distracting. And so if you really want your video to look professional, most editors stick with cross dissolves, which is located first in your transitions, or fades. Those are the ones that are most commonly used. So take a moment to add and explore various transitions between your clips. If you don't like one or you just want to get rid of it and try another, press Control Z. That will delete it. Use a cross dissolve transition most frequently, but do find a few others that you may want to use and feel free not to use a transition at all. So explore, be curious, and we'll pick up where we've left off in our next video.